what's your take on the Simmons for Harden trade? I know there are others are involved, but those are the headliners. So yeah. what, what, what's your take on that? Well, uh, basketball-wise, um, I think the Sixers, the conventional wisdom is that if you get the best player, you win the trade. They got the best player, even if you're inclined to believe that James Harden is not the player that he once was. Maybe the last time he and Daryl Moore were together, were together, he's not the same player. But the, he's still the best player in this trade. However, um, I do think that Simmons – when he plays, will be the better fit. Now, what's, the trip part about this whole thing is, usually when teams blow it up, it's either because guys are past their prime or it's because, you know, a guy, there's money involved. There's some, you know, typical reason why uh, a, a, an experiment didn't work. This one didn't work for reasons that had nothing to do with basketball. They never played together, the, the Nets I'm talking about. And when they did play together, they were wonderful this was a personality conflict and James Harden just getting restless. So that's the most fascinating aspect of it. This is, this is unlike any kind of star swap we've seen. And the same thing goes for Philadelphia. They were just sick of Ben Simmons' act. Now, having said that, going back to basketball, I think Simmons is the better fit with the Nets and what they already have and what they need than Harden is with the Sixers, um, even though they weren't getting anything from Simmons to begin with. So while the uh, the Sixers got the better player. I would be inclined to think, again, once he plays, and assuming he's okay, that the Nets got the better of the trade. But the broader aspect of it is, on Harden's side, legacy, and I don't need to get into that, I'm just happy to see and hear from Ben Simmons. And not that he needs my approval, but I, like many others, reduced his discontent to the comments that were made after the Hawks series um, and other motivations such as ego and wanting to have his own team and not wanting to get along with Embiid and this, that, and the other. If he has some personal issues that preceded his playoff meltdown and that further complicated it, I just hope he's getting to a place where he can be happy and be the player that he's gifted enough to be. So I'm happy for him. I'm happy he's got a, a fresh start. And even though he's in the New York market, uh, I would think there's less pressure on him, um, at least to begin with, we'll see how teams are able to exploit his lack of shooting in the playoffs. What do you make of the concept of uh, his mental health um, being the reason why he couldn't play for Philadelphia and now he's with Brooklyn and he seems to be um, struggling less with that, mm. Michael? You're talking about in terms of skepticism as to whether or not it really just came down that he didn't want to be in Philly and it's not really mental health and, you know, is he using mental health as a cover? You mean that? Um, let me just put a uh, fine point on it that, yeah, that is the yeah. conversation being had in Philadelphia and writ large I understand that this could be possible. And it is very touchy subject. It couldn't yeah. be not. It's one of the touchiest subjects. Uh, it's one that we, you know, take very seriously. Sure. Um, and so um, what do you think? I think you should be consistent. And I, and I know that's what I want to be. Um, it would be a disservice and it would be unfair. And that was the skepticism to begin with that, you know, this is a guy really throwing a tantrum and using something very serious as a shield from further criticism when he's just not, you know, tough enough to handle what thousands of players have handled before him and will handle after him, which is criticism for his own shortcomings. But I'm, I'll, I'll say this from personal experience. Um, you can't heal where you got sick. And whatever he was dealing with uh, off the court, I can't do anything other than take his word that there was something else going on. I don't think it's for me or us for that matter mm -hmm. to dismiss his claims that he had some stuff going on in his life independent of the playoffs and independent of his relationship with the Sixers. And those things only exacerbated or compounded whatever was going on. So, yes, is it convenient that he's on the road to playing again now that he's gotten what he's wanted? It's no different than our children. You know, they throw a tantrum, then you give them what they want, and they act as sweet as pie. It's like, well, wait a second. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's not the way you go about doing things. But if he says that there were issues that he doesn't want to get into, I think if we're going to be consistent when it comes to evolving and maturing ourselves – as a society, as an industry, as individuals, when it comes to discussing the broad tent that is mental health, then let's be consistent. 
you know, let's not let let's not because we already have a preconceived notion or we only have, already have an opinion about what we think it is or what we think it should be. Let's not let that cloud our judgment. Or let's not even judge at all. I think it's not a hot take, but I think it's the right way to go about it. If somebody says I had issues that I don't want to, I don't really want to get into, that had nothing to do with the trade. I'm going to believe him the same way I'm going to believe James Harden that Philadelphia was his first choice, even though he probably says that to all the teams at this point. So, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I, I, I think the best way to do it is the way we've always been doing it, which is let's be better than we've been traditionally and historically when it comes to dismissing out of hand somebody struggling uh, with personal issues. I mean, they have, they have lives outside of basketball. We see the basketball. We see him turning down shots. We see him turning down dunks. We see him demanding a trade and sitting out a season and, and, and losing a bunch of money. I'll tell you what, I respect the fact that my guy was so committed to not playing for that organization again that he forfeited a, a big chunk of change. So I would think something must have really been wrong for him to give up the millions of dollars that he did. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.